In ancient times, people talked about conflicts that they had in their lives by telling animal stories. Well, today, in this talk, I'm going to tell you a story about two wolves, three pigs, one reindeer, one burrow, one camel, one horse, two dogs, sheep, cattle, and underdogs <laughs> of every species. There was an old sow who had three pigs, and as she had not enough to keep them, here was a mother that had fallen on hard times. And a lot of people can relate to this today. Her whole life was crashing around her, and perhaps it was worse than any of us can imagine. She was going to have to give up her children because she did not have enough money to feed them. She sent the pigs out to make their fortune. Well, the first went off and met a man who had a bundle of straw. And he said to him, Please, man, give me that straw to build my house, which the man did, and the little pig built a house out of straw. Well, presently came the wolf. There is an ancient saying that you know well. The wolf is at the door. This means some type of bad situation has come to your household. Well, presently came along a wolf, knocked at his door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. To which the pig answered, No, no, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. The wolf then answered, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed. He blew his house in, and it was not good for the little pig. The second little pig met a man with a bundle of sticks and said, Please, man, give me those sticks to build a house. And the man did, and the pig built his house. And along came the wolf and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the little pig said, no, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And so he huffed and he puffed and he blew his house in. And it wasn't good for the little pig. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. He pondered a bit before making his choice because it was going to be a bit harder to build with bricks. It would take more time. But then he said, please, man, give me those bricks to build my house with. What kind of choices are we making to build our lives? We are given the power by God to build a house of our choosing. We can build a house quickly, easily, so it seems, out of straw, sticks, or bricks. It's our choice how easy or how difficult we make our lives. It is the same God-given power to make our lives seem easy. But sometimes it takes a bit longer, as the Bible says, to build our house on a firm foundation that will last throughout all time. The Three Little Pigs is a story not about building a house, but about making soul choices. We need to realize that we can have bricks from God. We do not have to settle for straw or sticks, but in our free will, it is our choice. 
We can get instant gratification in life and take the first thing that comes along, or we can take a little bit longer and make the right choices. And in the end, it will make our life a lot easier. So the man gave him the bricks, and he built the house with them, and the wolf came, as he did with the other pigs, and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig says, no, no, not by the hair on my chinny, chin, chin. And the wolf said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he couldn't blow the house in. When he found out that he could not blow the house down, he was quite disturbed. So, the little pig in the story outsmarted the wolf and he continued to outsmart the wolf this could be a story of our economy today it's a story about you it's a story about me it is about how we're using our God-given power we can outsmart the wolf that comes to the door Many stories are written about the wolf at the door. One of the most popular is Little Red Riding Hood. The purpose of these stories is to give you the idea that when the wolf comes to your door, in whatever form that might be, it is not the end. There is another new beginning for you. It's a chance for you to have a second chance. A second chance by having the Christ Spirit guide you and by going to God and having God give you the direction in which you need to go. You will be able to get out of the maze that we sometimes find ourselves in. You have the choice. You have the choice to build your life towards lasting success. Do you realize the Three Little Pig story is from the year 1620? It was originally in German, translated to English, and it was hundreds and hundreds of years old then. Jesus says this in Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them. That's the key. You can hear the words all day long. It's acting on the words. will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain came, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat at the house, but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. What does it mean to build your house on the rock? It means to have a firm foundation for your life. It means to build your life every day in a spiritual way, block by block, thought by thought. Whenever the wolf comes to your door, you turn within. In prayer, you go to God. And that is what building your house on the right foundation means. It spiritually empowers you in the moment, giving you a power to live your life as you choose to live your life. Now, I continue in Matthew 7, 26 and 27. And everyone that hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall. The way you build your house, the way I build my house, says everything about us. 
Matthew 7 verse 13 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. We have many choices, and it seems like easy choices would be the best decision. The gate that is easy to go through. Look at that gate that is wide. The gate is wide and most people are going through it. And we think, well, the crowd's going through it, I'll just go through it too. And then we realize that we made our choice too quickly and the road leads to the destruction of our future success. We can have a life that is built like a palace or a life that is built like a shack. If you're living a hard life in a shack, this is not God's will for you. It is not the way that God wants you to live. Now, I continue in Matthew 7, 14 through 20. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life and there are few that find it. Beware false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree can't bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. You stand on a firm foundation as you turn within in prayer you enter into something beyond the realm of your own human mind. You enter through a spiritual opening within you to God's mind. And when you go through that opening, the narrow gate, you have a life that is filled with peace and beauty. Now, let's talk about false prophets. False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing may be the man on TV that says, buy this item and it will make you happy. Just sign here on the dotted line and your life will be better. And you, you think, well, if that would really make me happy, I'll do it. But often that is not the case. You never have to pay to God for God's gifts. God is always free and always available to you. Now, if you are an underdog, you have tried and you've tried to succeed, but you have not. You may feel that you can't turn things around yourself. You may feel there's nothing more that you can do to make your life better. Well, that's the time to go to God and receive the spiritual gift of nourishment and achievement. There is a story of an underdog with a nose that was unlike normal noses of his breed. Secondly, he was a misfit. Thirdly, he was a psychological problem. But then came that foggy night. And when that foggy night came, a breakthrough came for Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, whose shiny nose was the way-shower and the light-bearer for Santa's legendary team. He had the honor of guiding Santa's sleigh through the uncharted skyways of a murky Christmas Eve. Many a touching fable has been told about animals and the unexpected acclaim that came to them. There are ancient legends about a burrow that was rejected because he was too docile for any good. He was pawned off on a man named Joseph and eventually born upon his somber back 
the mother of Jesus, on her way to Bethlehem. There is an ancient legend about a camel that didn't have a beggar's man chance to become famous, but he was chosen by Muhammad to bear the prophet in triumph to the holy city of Mecca. There was a holy steed that pulled the chariot that brought the Buddha out of the confinement of his father's palace. And there was a dog that became a champion of the prophet Zoaster. And there were animals of the forest, hunted by men, that became special wards of St. Francis. All throughout history, there have been stories of lowly animals, and perhaps it is a spiritual truth, because we have inside of us a spiritual high, and then we have inside of us a lowly animal. And it is our choice in the end, daily, which side we act from. And I pray that you choose the higher path. When Jesus Christ was born, he was born into a stable of animals. There are stories of animals and how they were aware that night of his specialness that are written in many ancient texts. They were aware of what was happening. I believe they did. How could you miss something like that? What living creature wouldn't have a sense of the birth of Christ? And I think we have that sense in us too. When it happens again in us, when we have been an underdog for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden, we have a spiritual experience that awakens the specialness of who we are as a child of God. In Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, it says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints of the members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in whom you are also built together spiritually in a dwelling place for God. As you turn to God, I tell you a new construction occurs within you, not just your foundation, but every cell of your body temple, every thought of your mind. The Creator recreates Regeneration under the divine blueprint follows. There is much more under construction in your physical body than you may be aware of even right now. Your entire life is constantly being reconstructed, rebuilt completely. The mistake that we make as human beings is we say it's too late for me. It's not too late for the young people, but it's too late for me. This is not true. The second chance begins with the choice that you make. God is a God of second chances and always offers additional chances to you to succeed and become better than you were yesterday. 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 26 says, God's firm foundation stands bearing this inscription, The Lord knows those who are God's, and let everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness. Now, the wickedness is within us on a daily basis, or so is the child of God nature. And I choose to go the highway. 
And I know that you choose that too. I know that you choose to go higher than you have ever done thus far, even if you have been in church every day of your life. There is always more of God to discover, to unfold in you. Turn to God and know this, that the best is yet to be.